At 1.43 p.m. on the 13th of April 2010, an Airbus A330 is attempting to land at Hong Kong International. However, one of its engines had failed and the other one was stuck at full thrust. Even if the pilot is able to touch down on the runway safely, there is no way to slow down the aircraft. And now, there is a serious risk of all 322 occupants running off the runway and plunging into the ice-cold South China Sea, drowning everyone on board. What happened to Cathay Pacific Flight 780? CPA 780 lines up on runway 28. It's an Airbus A330-300 and it currently carries 308 passengers and 13 crew. Captain Malcolm Waters and First Officer David Hayhoe believe that they are in control of the flight. However, the chain of disaster has already been set in motion and no matter how hard they try, they cannot prevent what is about to happen. As the Airbus climbs to its cruising level of 39,000 feet, the flight crew noticed some abnormal engine pressure ratio fluctuations on engine number 2. The same problem existed on engine number 1 but within a narrower range. Engine pressure ratio or EPR shows how easily the engines are maintaining the desired level of thrust output. The engine performance was struggling because as the fuel pumps pumps fuel from the contaminated tanks and into the two engines, microscopic fears of a jelly-like substance began attaching themselves on and around various components of the fuel metering units or FMUs, progressively jamming the acceleration and deacceleration of each engine. At 8.58, shortly after levelling off at flight level 390, a message was enunciated. It read, Engine 2 Control System Fault and Engine 2 Slow Response. The crew consulted with the checklist and saw that Engine 2 Slow Response meant to avoid sudden power changes. They contacted a maintenance engineer and debated whether the flight should continue. Because all other engine parameters seemed normal and the caution message had now disappeared, the consensus was that the flight could continue to Hong Kong and the maintenance would continue to monitor the situation from the operations centre. Meanwhile, the jelly-like substance continued to clog up the fuel metering units. Almost two hours into the flight, the same message reappeared, but with additional information to avoid rapid thrust changes. The engine anti-ice was selected for both engines, but this had no effect. The crew then again contacted a maintenance engineer who told them that he had seen these EPR fluctuations before and that the fuel metering units of engine number 2 would be replaced after landing. At 1.19pm, the crew were cleared to begin their descent into Hong Kong. The autothrottle attempted to decrease the power outputs of both engines, however they refused. The fuel metering units had become completely clogged up and they could no longer respond to throttle movements. Descending through 30,000 feet with an airspeed of 295 knots, there was a loud popping sound and the smell of ozone filled the flight deck. The crew immediately looked down to see another two amber caution meshes illuminated. Engine 1 control system fault and critically, engine 2 stall. In accordance to standard operating procedure, engine 2 was set to idle. To compensate for the loss of engine 2, the engine 1 thrust lever was advanced to the maximum continuous thrust position. However, engine 1 only temporarily increased to about 57% thrust and then dropped back down to 37%. To make problems worse, engine 1 slow response and avoid rapid thrust changes were then announced. Realising the severity of their situation, the flight crew declared a pan-pan one step away from a mayday to Hong Kong ATC and advised them of their problem. At 1.30pm, a warning chimed. Engine 1 stall. Just like engine number 2, the engine 1 thrust lever was put into the idle position in accordance to the standard operating procedure. With both engines now at the idle position, the captain tested the controllability of the engines by leaving the thrust levers one at a time. Neither engine responded. Both engines were now stuck at idle thrust. 
The aircraft had now become a glider and if not dealt with properly, they would fall into the ocean way before arriving at Hong Kong International. The crew declared Mayday and advised Hong Kong approach of the double engine stall situation. CPA 780 was then cleared to descend to about 3000 feet. After the captain continued to move the thrust lever numerous times, engine number one slowly increased to about 74% thrust. However, engine number two remained at idle at about 17% thrust. Because of their quick descent, the aircraft was travelling too fast for this part of the approach and so the captain pulled thrust lever 1 to idle and selected flaps 1. However, engine number 1 remained at 74% thrust. Now one engine was stuck at a high setting whilst the other was basically dead. As you can imagine, this is not an ideal scenario. The crew had the impossible task of landing an aircraft at speeds it wasn't designed for and they had no way of slowing down an aircraft on the runway if one engine is at near takeoff thrust. The problem was no longer falling into the ocean before landing, but falling into the ocean after. At 1.40pm, Hong Kong approach cleared CPA 780 for landing on runway 07 left. The flight crew deployed the speed brakes to help slow down the aircraft, but this didn't help at all. One minute later, at 244 knots, the overspeed warning sounded and the flight crew were forced to stow and arm the speed brakes as they could not be extended for landing. Instead of using the speed brakes, flaps 2 was selected to help slow down the aircraft instead. The terrain warning sounded, which then turned into the pull up alarm, all whilst the overspeed warning still rang in the background. 100 miles per hour over the normal landing speed and with one engine at full thrust, Cathay Pacific Flight 780 touched down on runway 07 left. The aircraft bounced off of the runway and smashed its left engine against the ground. However, they still weren't slowing down. The plane stopped 300 meters before the end of the runway. During the evacuation, one passenger sustained serious injuries whilst 56 passengers and 6 crew members sustained minor injuries. Everyone survived. The refueling facility at Surabaya had been recently overhauled. Several underground fuel pipes were added in order to increase the aircraft capacity. However, this was done in heavy rain. Consequently, salt water from an overflowing pond made its way into the pipes as they were being fitted. During the refueling of Cathay 780, the fuel filters made of a material called superabsorbent polymer, also known as SAP, reacted with the salt water, turning the fuel into a gel-like substance. This material flowed freely into the Airbus A330's fuel tanks. 